Now I'm 5'10. Not a problem for this Red Hawk to fly over. To combat all of the terrible towels at LP Field, every fan was given one of these 12th man towels before the game. Today's game wasn't decided by towels, but turnovers. At times, this wasn't exactly a thing of beauty. It looked a little more like my four-year-old's finger painting, but in the end, it was a work of art, a masterpiece for the Commodores, and one of the artists who helped get it done tonight, this guy right here. They say football is a game of inches, and today the Titans lost by 180 of them. This headline on the Tennessee and Preps Guide says it all. The Ravens have arrived. My alma mater, Bowling Green, taking on San Jose State in the Military Bowl. My Falcons, I mean the Falcons, down 19-13 in the fourth quarter when John Pettigrew finds some room. He's ruled down at the one. BG would score and take the lead. I Ziggy Zumba. All the experts I heard said the Titans will take a defensive lineman. After all, last season they were second to last in the NFL in sacks with only 28. So we figured they'd either go that way or cornerback, obviously, with the loss of Cortland Finnegan to free agency. But they surprised everyone. They're creepy and they're kooky. Mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky. I'm not talking about the Adams family, but the Chicago Bears defense. Tennessee now 4-7, and seven, and they are winless for the year in the SEC. Derek Dooley has only won one game in conference in the last two seasons. Afterwards, he said the program is not in as bad a shape as people think it is, and you can't base it on just one game, but those stats are not good, and there is already talk that Dooley will lose his job as soon as tomorrow. Dave. The music playing in the background is I've had the time of my life and these Ensworth Tigers have had the time of their life not just this year winning this, their state championship but for the last three seasons and afterwards they talked about that sweet 3 P. It's been the most fun I've had in high school. It, it's such a great experience. A great experience no doubt about it. The win is Ensworth 21st in a row. As I mentioned, their third straight state championship. It's their third in seven years. The school's only been playing football seven years as a varsity sport, and they've already got three gold footballs. Pretty impressive, I'd say, huh, Paul? A little bit of frustration and disappointment in Smashville tonight. No question about that, Paul. And the frustration stemming from the fact that the Predators actually played better in game two than game one. They just had really nothing to show for it, obviously, as you mentioned, losing the game. The big difference tonight, missed opportunities. We have to take the same momentum uh, going to Detroit and uh, get ready for Sunday's game. Sunday's game, obviously game three in the Motor City. The Preds should have plenty of positive vibes going into that one. The last time they faced the Red Wings in Joe, Joe Lewis Arena, they shut them out three nothing. So we'd sure take a repeat of that on Sunday, wouldn't we, Paul? How sweet a sight is that? Chris Johnson becoming the first player in NFL history with four touchdown runs of over 80 yards on Sunday. Uh, if only he could play Buffalo every week, huh? This Sunday's matchup is nearly as good. The Colts are ranked 26th against the run, meaning CJ could be in for another big day. Number 28 is pumped about that possibility, but he's living by the mantra, patience is a virtue. It gets me excited, but I still can't go in there looking for the big round. I just got to stay with my keys and continue to hit the hole, and it's going to come like it came on Sunday. Looking for the home run too much gets you in trouble more than it's a good thing. So I think the fact that we know that it's, it's there and it's, it's, it's possible to happen in any play is a good thing. If we get another one of those, it would be awesome, but I, I'll take the four and five yards uh, runs every time he touched the ball. The good news is CJ's riding high right now, pun intended. The bad news is the defense is still struggling big time. The Bills becoming the sixth team in seven games to score 30 on the men in two-tone blue. In fact, most of the stats for the Titans' defense are U-G-L-Y. They're ugly. There's only one guy who isn't worried. When you're winning, you don't care about stats. Like I said last year, who was the, the worst team in the NFL on defense? New England? Where were they at? Okay. Okay. Believe it or not, this is the Thursday Night Lights finale for this fall. And talk about going out with a bang. The Wilson County showdown I'm going to show you is just that. Not only are bragging rights on the line between rivals Mount Juliet and Wilson Central, but playoff seeding. The winner of this matchup of 8-1 teams clinches second place in the district in a first-round home game in the playoffs. Check it out, even the mascots don't like each other. 
Pick it up, Mount Juliet trailing 7-6 with a minute to go in the first half. Nolan Chow Bay looking for Jalen Graham. The ball's tipped right into Graham's hands and he's gone. The 47-yard score and two-point conversion makes it 14-7 Bears at the half. Second half, it was all Mount Juliet. Contrez McCathern rumbles 22 yards to the house. That makes it 31-7. The Bears get bragging rights and a first-round home game with a 38-15 victory. One more note to pass along. San Francisco takes a two games to none lead over Detroit in the World Series. The Giants shut out the Tigers 2-0. Game three shifts to Detroit. You can see that one right here on Fox 17 Saturday night. His name is Brian Farmer. Brian always had been a tough competitive athlete, but his strength, power, and drive had never truly been tested until a few years ago. Now he's not only a fighter and a survivor, but as you're about to see, a true inspiration. Brian Farmer had his whole basketball career mapped out. A six foot six inch forward, number 33 in white, planned on playing college ball after graduating from Crittenden County High School in Kentucky. With his height and skills, Farmer was on track to do just that until the night of October 16, 1996, when his whole life changed in a matter of minutes. After work, uh, I got in with a drunken driver. And 20 minutes later uh, was the accident, and uh, he was speeding and uh, took the curve a little too fast and, and car flipped nine times, killing the driver and leaving me paralyzed. Brian's paralysis means that dunking may be a distant memory, but his playing career is far from over. For the last four years, Farmer has made the two and a half hour track from Princeton, Kentucky to McMurray Middle School in Nashville, where he hops into his wheelchair, straps in, All right, we're ready to roll. and mans the post as a member of the Music City Lightning. This boosted my morale. It, it's gave me a lot. It's gave me something in my life that I was missing, you know? It was, it's, it's been a great opportunity. It's fun, the guys are cool, and, and I like the competition. And make no mistake, the Lightning are very competitive. Whether it's 17-year-old point guard Nathaniel Woodard, who despite being born with spina bifida, plans on playing in college. Come on. Hoping they get a full scholarship to Alabama. Or small forward Kenny Green. The Lightning acting is an important outlet to fulfill his love of the game. Unfortunately, I haven't played it all my life, and I wish I had. You know, basketball's always been my favorite sport, and, you know, it's, uh, it's something that I had to come out here and I enjoy doing. And that joy comes from more than just making layups or free throws. But as Farmer says... I've learned to live again. I've learned to... Uh, take any obstacle that's in front of me and, you know, not say I can't do it, I'll find a way to do it. Now Brian and the rest of his teammates are trying to find a way to win the national championship. Two years ago, the Lightning finished fifth in the national tournament. The bar is set much higher this year. The ultimate goal is number one in the nation. Everybody's practiced really hard over the last, you know, summers and, and whatnot, so they put in an extra mile just because we, we want to win. Whether Farmer and the Lightning bring home the title or not, one thing is certain. Their attitude towards life makes them a champion. You gotta be thankful for every day, you know? Yeah, I might be in a wheelchair, but as I always tell my friends about any situation, no matter what, what's your condition, what's going on, it can always be worse. That's, that's definitely true. I might complain about being in a wheelchair, but I have two hands to push it. Listening to Brian and his teammates really puts some perspective into life's petty problems, doesn't it?